Hi everyone and welcome to my very first Halloween special. Today we're going to build this kinetic spider sculpture. Uh, this is one of the biggest projects that I have done so far and uh, just a small warning, this is not the easiest build and some parts of the assembly process could be improved, but if you want you can make this yourself. So as always I will put a link to the 3D files in the description, uh, just download and print them and I'm gonna show you how to build it all together. But yeah, I would say that from certain angles it looks really good and the spider moves kind of realistically. And in fact from a distance I could almost swear it's real! So sorry if that scared you, but yeah, I just had to do that one. Uh, happy Halloween everybody! Anyway, today I'm doing things a little bit differently. Uh, we will just jump straight into the building phase and uh, here and there I will add a bit of extra behind the scenes stuff. So I started by printing the biggest parts, uh, I think this one took around 12 hours and this will serve as the base for the entire sculpture. Now we will create 8 little assemblies, uh, just grab one of these gears and next you take the first type of linkage that looks like this and you insert it into the gear. And then you take the second type of linkage and insert that into the first linkage. And that's it. And since each gear has a different length, there will only be one position in the base where you can place this gear. Let me show you this up close. And by the way, I constantly make changes to my prints even after I filmed some steps. So some prints, like the gears, uh, could look a little bit different when you print them. But they should still look very close to what you see here on screen. Uh, and maybe I should explain what we are exactly doing here, so we are basically building small hooken mechanisms and a hooken mechanism creates this fast circular motion in one direction and a slower straight motion in the other direction. And this is exactly what you need for any type of walking or crawling behavior. Um, I prototyped them in a software called Linkage and this is a computer aided design program created by David M. Rector. It's available for free and uh, it's pretty amazing and very powerful. I used it to figure out the different lengths of the linkages and it allowed me to discover that the mirrored mechanism creates the exact same movement but it just lacks 180 degrees um, and I take advantage of that in this design. I will put a link to his software in the description and I will definitely use this again in the future. Okay, the final one goes in and now you should have something like this. Okay, now we need to make sure that these mechanisms stay in place and this can be done by installing some covers. So I take some super glue and I fix them in place one by one. The uh, L-shaped covers are first placed over the blue linkages and uh, needless to say, don't apply glue where it could touch the axles or the entire mechanism could uh, get stuck. To be honest, this part of the design is something that I think I could improve. Um, I like to have solutions where I don't need any glue, but designing things that for example snap into place generally take more effort and prototyping. And uh, for a project of this size you have to be careful where to focus all of your energy or you could end up completely missing your deadline. So one prototype I did make before I printed all of this was this little mechanism that just moves one leg. And when I got that working, I became a lot more confident that this spider sculpture could work. So something that I did not expect is that the small prototype already made me feel something strange. You know, it, it looked like I chopped off a spider leg and then attached it to this mechanical device as if to perform some strange kind of scientific experiment. Yeah, kind of creepy. So one L-shaped cover has this little cutout that has to be placed over this angled rib as you can see here. Next up are the rectangular covers that hold the gears in place. So just the same thing here, I glue them in place one by one. And now an important step which is not so easy to explain. So each of the gears has this little dot that should be pointing up. So rotate each of them so that this is the case and uh, by doing so you ensure a correct animation of these spider legs. The problem, as I discovered myself, is that when you now install the big gear, those dots will move again. 
and we want those dots to keep pointing up even after the big gear has been installed. That means that before installing the gear, you have to rotate each of the mechanisms a little bit in opposite directions, so that after installing the big gear, all the dots are pointing up again. Uh, and this can take a few tries, I think it took me like four times. Um, and this is another part of the design that I feel could be improved. So here I'm doing a small test, and uh, when everything looks fine, I also secure the blue gear in place with two more covers. And then I also take a crank and I attach it to the end of the blue gear with some more glue. Now I will also attach a couple of feet on the back side. Just like that. And then time to test everything again. Um, and what you are seeing now is how things should be moving. So now it's time to install this big cover plate. It uh, contains some guiding features on the bottom to ensure everything runs smoothly. And then we finish the base by inserting two parts that will support the spider's body. Uh, they also move up and down a little bit when you rotate the crank. Okay, time to assemble the spider. Um, I will make sure that everything has a logical layout on the print bed. Just make sure to keep everything nicely separated when you remove the prints. For each of the spider legs, I clean up the little attachments with a file to make the hole nicely rounded. And sometimes I also quickly use a lighter to remove any stringing. Uh, afterwards I try to place it over a linkage to see if it works well. Uh, and if you end up destroying one, you can always print a new one. See, that's one of the benefits of 3D printing, right? Now here's how to assemble one leg. You simply snap them into each other, nothing difficult here. And next I glue the two petty pulps in place. By the way, this is what a spider uses for sensing and uh, handling its prey. And uh, I did not know that. So now I assemble each leg one by one. And again, make sure to install the correct leg uh, at each spot. You should feel it click when you pushed it far enough. So for the design of the spider I purchased a model on Sketchfab called Furry Spider and I used it as my starting template, uh, both for the mesh and the animation. And then I heavily modified it in Blender to include all the different joints. Now I glue this little clamp into the spider's abdomen. And I click it into the spider's cephalothorax. I had to look up all those names by the way. And that's it. And by the way, I will include legs without those little features for those of you who just want to print the spider alone. So next I paint the spider black. And uh, if you wonder why I did not print it black in the first place, uh, it's because red is easier to see on camera. Um, but also the red color will shine through here and there, and I do like that effect. And so now, a big moment. Uh, we install the spider on the two supports by aligning them with the holes in the body. And then I install each leg one by one. So I rotate a mechanism in between to make the linkages pop out one by one. Um, here's a close up shot. The legs should snap over the little tab on the linkages. At this point I assembled it multiple times, which is why this all goes very smoothly. This is the third aspect of the design that I would improve if I would have to do it all over again. Um, but so far I have not really found something better. And it works, so yeah. So now we can finally test the mechanism. Um, I know I felt a big relief when everything was working fine. So I had created that little prototype with one leg and that did make me feel a bit more confident, but it's still not the same as making eight legs move all at the same time. 
for example the internal friction could have become too high or uh, legs could get stuck somewhere or constantly pop out you never know um, but luckily none of that was the case here so yeah this was a really big project and as always i kind of underestimated it um, if you like what i'm doing here please consider subscribing you would really help me out a lot so yeah, I'm just gonna play with this a little bit more and uh, probably show it to my friends and family. Uh, and then I will move on to the next project. Uh, I'll try to upload once every month, I think, because I have to be careful not to burn myself out here. Uh, but anyway, again, I wish you all a very happy Halloween and I will see you on the next one. Bye!